What is good everybody? It is your boy Jim Michael from Jim Reviews here today with the shoe you guys have been all been waiting for. Today I got the New Balance Fresh Foam Beacon V3. Not V2, V3. And I've had it for a few months. You guys may ask me in the comment section down below. And today's the day. We're gonna find out what I think about the newest Beacon. One of my favorite shoes and its newest update. So first off, what is New Balance Beacon? Well, the Beacon is New Balance's lightweight, neutral, plush daily trainer. So it can definitely go for the long runs, short runs, light enough to go fast enough in, but it still has enough cushion for the pushing when it comes to the pace. Oh no, that, that's just something we say. It's, it's all good, it ain't. In the first version, I was like, what is this? And once I tried it, I was like, oh, it's real. V2 came out and I was like, okay, Back to back, what are we doing? Drake versus Meek Mills? And this version is like Bad Boys 3. And in the V3, it takes things just a little bit further, just fine tuning the little small things. And I think that's all they need to do. So, spoiler alert, I love this shoe. I'm keeping this shoe. It's Jimson approved. But let's break down the shoe from top to bottom. So as you can see, the V3 looks almost like the V2 as far as the, the flaring out heel collar that all the shoes have nowadays. It's still there. Did it affect me last year? No. This year? No, do I like it? Don't really care for it, but it's there, doesn't bother me, so I'm not complaining. What I do like is the same fit. Wide toe box, snug in the midfoot, simple upper, no hot spots, no weird irritations, a nice volume on the foot. So if you have a wide foot, a narrow foot, you can stitch it down to get that nice fit, or if you have a wider foot, it fits pretty good just out the box. Probably the biggest difference in the upper is the engineered mesh on top. It's a little modified. The material is a little bit different, but not enough to be like, oh my gosh, they changed it. It's much better, it's much worse. It's still breathable, it still feels good on foot. The tongue is lightly padded. And I would say that the one thing about the tongue I wish they would have did is made it one piece. All these new shoes are coming with these one piece uppers where the tongue doesn't move. And I feel like they could do that with the V3. There isn't any way to cinch down the tongue through the laces. You know how some shoes have the tongue where it has that little piece in there where it goes through the laces and keeps the tongue in place? This shoe doesn't have that. So I mean, I didn't have any issues really with the tongue moving too much, but it's like, it could happen. And I wish they would've just put that one little small feature in there like most shoes have nowadays. But you know, maybe V4, I don't know. But as far as comfort, nice, spot on. For a lightweight trainer, it's not too invasive, not too plush. And going back towards the heel collar, it's very simple and very like minimal. You might think, oh, this might cut into my ankle. It may be uncomfortable. There's a little bit of padding inside the shoe, right around the perimeter of the ankle collar. It's kind of molded to fit right around your ankle, so it feels nice, at the same time not being too stuffy, because for a lightweight trainer, I don't want it too stuffy. So it kind of finds that middle ground. So the people want to know, Jamie, does this shoe have fresh foam, or is it fresh foam X, like in the Tempo, in the 1080? Well, I got bad news, and I got good news. The bad news is, it is not fresh foam X. It continues to use the normal fresh foam. But with that, it kind of keeps that same feel because some people feel that like the Fresh Foam X is a little too squishy and has too much compression. I don't really think so. And now what I really like to see in the new iteration of the V3 of the Beacon, but I'm not mad because I also love the Fresh Foam in the setup. It still maintains that responsiveness. So it's like if they would've went to the X, maybe it would've been too squishy or maybe they would've had to modify the stack heights. I don't know, I kind of just go with the flow, but I'm not mad. I thought I would be mad, but I'm not. It feels like a beacon, and to me that's a good thing. Now with that said, there's a possibility that this shoe may change because this is an early model. I've had it since like late February, it is almost June. So things may change, you know, I don't know everything. The coronavirus could have changed some things up in the meantime, so I don't know. Coronavirus! But as far as what I have in my foot right now, or in my hand, it is fresh foam, so maybe we'll see. But if it doesn't change, I'll probably get another pair, different color. But yeah, fresh foam still works. And I feel like cushioning wise, it works well. What makes it work is that it's so versatile. Long runs, short runs, it's responsive enough, not too sloppy, good balanced shoe. This is why I love the Beacon. It's the most, come on little doggy. It is the most balanced shoe, no pun intended because it's new balance, as far as the lightweight trainers go. And I love it for that reason. Now as far as the outsole, you don't got much to talk about here. It is kind of plain Jane, exposed rubber, the fresh foam is ground contact graded, so it is meant for the contact of the ground, which means it may get roughed up aesthetically, but functionally, it will still do the job as far as traction and durability, which leads me to a negative. 
Durability in these shoes aren't always the best. I would say maybe 300 miles to get out of these before you're like, all right, I'm done with it. Maybe get more, maybe get less, depending on how you foot strike, how much you weigh, all that nonsense, what do you run on? But yeah, lightweight trainers typically don't last that long. But hey, for 120, I'm not mad. So as far as lightweight trainers, I love the Beacon V3. I love the Socket Kinvara 11, and I love the Hoka Rencon. And I can't say which one I like better necessarily, but out of those three, this is the most balanced shoe. So I kind of feel like it's the most versatile out of the three. So if you want one shoe that's just lightweight, cushioning, and you don't mind it not lasting forever, I think this is the way to go. The Beacon V3 is solid. As far as sizing, it runs true to size. So if you go a half size up from your actual foot size, that's typically your running shoe size. Maybe a full size if you're used to that. Go with your normal shoe size as far as running shoes. Nothing fancy here, true to size, true to size, true to size. One more time for those in the back, true to size. As far as negatives, I feel like I'm curious of what the Fresh from X would have been like. Maybe I wouldn't have liked it. So maybe it's good, but I'm curious now. So I kind of feel like they should have used the Fresh Foam X. Everything else was a very safe update. I like it, I'm not mad. So with that said, when it comes to the New Balance Fresh Foam Beacon V3, it is Jameson approved, baby. Well done. All right guys, let me know what you guys think about the Fresh Foam Beacon. These will be out very soon. They're usually a summer release. And if you see the V2 on sale, go for it. Stop playing with your emotions in your wallet. What's in your wallet? But yeah, that's my review. Uh, thanks for watching. Links down below for Beacon V2, V3 when they come out. I will update the links. So yeah. And with that said, be sure to stay in school. Don't do drugs. And if you can, keep it tight.